a Christmas screen. And it jingles. I wouldn't expect anything less. All right, the jingle game is strong with this one. And look at the sides of this box, how cute. Today's video is super special. One, because it's the mystery box. You guys know I love these. But two, it's the December slash Christmas mystery box. It's the last one of 2022, so it's a nice way to kind of wrap everything up. But then also, number two is that the twist this year is the same as the one we did last year in honor of Courtney and Courtney's mom. So I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but you guys are gonna wanna make sure to stick around for that, because that is my favorite part of the whole video. While I'm cracking this open, a little bit about the mystery box. Courtney, who I mentioned, Creative on the Cheap, is the coordinator, mastermind, logistics extraordinaire. I say it every time, but it literally cannot be said enough. Huge thank you to her for doing all this. So this box was sent to me from Val over at Auntie Cuckoo, and then I packed up a box and sent it over to Kelly at Kelly Barlow Creations. So after you watch my video, be sure to go down, click the playlist link, and it's all gonna run in a loop. So you'll watch my video, then I send my box to Kelly. You watch Kelly's video, you watch who she sent her box to, so on and so forth. So it's a nice big playlist full of a ton of inspiration and I also feel like these are so fun because this is where you really truly get to see everyone's personality as evident by me skipping down the stairs earlier so enjoy card first oh my gosh her handwriting is insanely beautiful okay so she says Merry Christmas Whitney I've so enjoyed getting to know you through YouTube you're amazingly talented and can't wait to see what you come up with for the mystery box challenge PS oh there's a little something for Finn Levante Cuckoo Val. First, that was such a nice card. I feel the same way. Thank you so much. I will have to add this to my collection of cards from the mystery box. I'm assuming this is the little fun thing for Finn. As a boy mom to a boy mom, I'm sure she knew that he would love this. So thank you so much. I'll have to give this to Finn and see what he thinks. I've got two challenge items that I must use. I don't have to use them together, but I must use them in a project throughout the video. So we're gonna leave those till the end. I'm gonna set them down here. So this box could be from anywhere. It was just 20 to $30 of stuff from any store. We've got some bells. <gasps> this must be 99 cent only. I'm so jealous. I always see stuff on Instagram from that store and it makes it look like just amazing. And this is so cute. We've got some color your own ornaments, snowflakes. Love these. A star mirror. Oh, so cute. Okay, these are risers from the Target Dollar Spot. <gasps> and a little lantern. Oh, that's so cute. It looks very Christmassy. I'm so excited. This is a great box. And then we have the challenges. She at least wrapped them super cute. Okay, so challenge item number one is a, a slinky. Don't know how I feel about this. It's really cute and pretty and fun. DIYing with it, I don't know. And then last but not least, we've got our final challenge item. What is this? Oh, <laughs> okay, that's a little dramatic, but it's so glittery, Val. Why? What? <laughs> you guys know I hate glitter. Like stuff like this, it just looks like it's gonna barf glitter all over you. We're gonna roll with it. We're gonna get some gloves and we're gonna make something beautiful out of this. Give me a second to think about it and I'll be right back to DIY. Let's do this thing. I'm gonna focus on Christmas DIYs, but I've got a lot of winter elements mixed in so that hopefully if you make these, you will get a lot more mileage out of them, leaving them up well past the holidays into the new year for winter decor. The first item that I'm gonna try to tackle from the box are these jingle bells. This was the first thing I got an idea for because once I saw the bells, I thought snowmen. So I started with some white chalk paint and it looked like trash. So I took it outside and used my ultra matte spray paint. I did two light coats, much better decision. Then I thought, okay, let's tie on some ribbon so that we can easily remove it and switch it to winter colors. So you've got Christmas and winter. Then I started drawing snowman faces. Easy enough, right? Oh my gosh, you guys. The first one was a train wreck. I had to include it because I thought it was almost going to be a gremlin bunny. But then I got my act together, made some smaller dots, painted on some noses, and they turned out so cute. So it could have went really wrong, but I'm glad it didn't. These are super great for a tear tray. I just put them in a hot cocoa mug and I put a little Target bag in the bottom to get them to sit up. I really had to rack my brain to come up with an idea for this lantern, but if this works out, it's gonna be awesome. Let's get started. For as long as I've had my own house, I have wanted vintage thermoses so much, but when I find one, it's so expensive. When I saw the handle of this lantern, the wheels got turning. So I grabbed my lantern, a Pringles container that's empty, and then these cups from Dollar Tree. When I saw them, I thought, okay, these might work great. 
So I lined it up on the top of the Pringles can and lo and behold, it was a perfect fit. So then I grabbed my miter shears and channeled my best Edward scissor hands to figure out how I was going to cut this to make a thermos handle. I love these tools. They're from Amazon. They're great to have in your stash if you don't already because you can cut a variety of things. Once I got it cut down to a shape that I liked, I used hot glue to hook it to the cup and then I glued the cup to the Pringles can top. Then I took it outside, gave it two light coats of some green spray paint and let that completely dry. While that was drying, I grabbed my Pringles can because as cute as the little Santa is, he is not fitting with my decor. So I wrapped it up with some tartan scrapbook paper. I told myself three times, don't cut this too short, and look what I did. You guys, I'm batting a thousand, but I'm redeeming myself on all these projects. I just took a little piece, slid it in the back, and covered it up because nobody's going to see it when it's out as decor, but don't do that if you recreate. I think I'm going to grab some more Pringles cans because I've got some more of those cups, and you don't need to cut apart a lantern for the handle. There are a variety of different things that you could use to make it, but I am literally obsessed. This would also be a great vessel for some gifts, some candies for Christmas. Super cute. All right, for the challenge item, I am grabbing these glitter bomb little vase fillers, but I thought they looked like candies, so you might have an idea of where I'm going with these. I have had this set of like paper mache cardboard houses from Hobby Lobby for months now. I originally bought them for a Hocus Pocus DIY, and like some things, I just didn't get to it in that video. And so this has been sitting in my closet, and I decided these would make awesome gingerbread houses. So I painted all of them all around in some nutmeg brown paint, now we are going to dress these up. So first I took some white paint and some baking soda and mixed it up to get a really thick consistency. And I added that to a lot of the peaks and the different eaves of the houses as well as around the bottom to make it look like snow had drifted. This is gonna dry like a thicker consistency which is really gonna make it look like fake snow. Then once that all dried, I went back through with some Tulip Puffy paint. I use this on all of my gingerbread DIYs and I like it because it makes all of them kind of look like they go together even though they're all handmade and a little different. You can go as crazy or as simple as you want with the details, but I find that I just kind of get in the zone and it's like very soothing to color these all out. And then once that all dried overnight, just to make sure nothing was going to be tacky, I used some hot glue to apply the cute little pieces from Val now. In her defense, they weren't as glittery as I thought they were. Again, I was being a little dramatic, but I just picked out the champagne and white color. They had like a yellowy in there too, but that wasn't really fitting my vibe. So I just lined the sides of some of them, put some across the top. And I think this was a perfect addition to still keep these neutral gingerbread decor, but add a little bit of Christmas sparkle. I love how the three different sizes turned out and I'm pretty sure this set is like 15 bucks, like regular price. So it's a really great set to grab and DIY. Also, if you can't find these or you're not near a Hobby Lobby, Michaels and Walmart and other craft stores sell birdhouses that are real wood and similar sizes, so you could use that as well. Next up, we're gonna go with the Star Mirror from Dollar Tree. Now, when I saw this star, for some reason I thought of my mom and how we are always talking about how when you see cardinals for Christmas, it's your loved ones. So I started by unscrewing the back, removing the mirror, and then measuring how wide I needed a decal. Hello, unflattering angle. I don't like crafting with mirrors. This reminded me why. Then I got out my smart vinyl and cut out a decal that I designed. It says, I am always with you. So I did that in a branch in black vinyl, just on my Cricut Joy, really easy to whip it up. And then I also cut out the cardinal in some like dark red vinyl. Now I was feeling lazy this day and couldn't find my Cricut Joy mat so I just cut a piece down so it was the width of the smart vinyl and because it was such a simple shape I thought it might work. I just said it was smart vinyl and voila it cut. I wouldn't recommend doing this for everything because like words and stuff it probably wouldn't cooperate but I was really happy to see that for simple shapes you can kind of hack the mat. Then I layered them on really simply. This is a really easy beginner like layering project. Applied my transfer tape and then stuck it right on to my mirror. The last step was to reassemble it and then I added a little bit of jute twine and I think this thing is beautiful. I think I'm gonna gift it to my mom because I think it would look really nice in her house and it's a nice reminder of her parents who have passed away that we always say, you know, they're near us when we see cardinals. So it's a nice touching, thoughtful gift and mom, now you know you're getting it because I know you watch all my videos. Every time they have risers like this at Target, I always grab a ton because I love them for actual decorating. But when I saw these, I had an idea for a DIY and you guys have been asking for something like this for a long time. So I'm really excited to get started on this one. 
This past summer when we were living with my parents, I shared some of my projects on my mom's tiered tray and you guys were like, did you build that? I did not, but I'm gonna show you how you can make one today. This Kirkland's one is so expensive, $130 regular price for a two tiered tray. No, 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 we are gonna dupe it. You guys know how we do it here. And you only need to pop the legs off the small one because that is gonna be the top level of our tiered tray. Now we're gonna need something to brace our tray. So I ended up grabbing a wooden handle from a Dollar Tree plunger just because I had that in my craft room. It's so random the things that we keep in our craft room. But I started by using my miter box to just trim off the little twisty end. And then I cut a piece 12 inches so that I had enough clearance for some mugs that I wanted to put on the tiered tray. And you could customize this to be as short or as tall as you want. Then I also cut another piece to just less than six inches so that that could be on the top of my tiered tray, as well as removing this little weird nub at the bottom of this finial again that I just found in my craft closet. I believe it's from Walmart originally, but you can also get those at any craft store. After a quick sand, I had to show you this fun new tool. Both Jennifer and Courtney got me hooked on this thing. It's a little vacuum that will clean up all your messes. It's from Amazon. I love it. I will link it down below. Thank you, ladies, for the recommendation. Then after a quick dry fit, I used just some wood glue to hook the finial to the top of the piece that's going to stick out of the top layer. And I just let it sit there and dry because there's not going to be any weight on it. The wood glue will hold just fine. I stained both pieces in early American stain and let that dry and then it was time to work on the actual beading detail on the outside like the inspiration. I grabbed some beads out of my stash that were the width of each of the pieces and I just used hot glue to apply them all around the outside. I buy my beads typically from Amazon just because it's easy but I also like to get them from Michaels. I will link down below my favorite sets. Then we're gonna go over the top with some chalk paint just to make that unfinished wood blend in with the white pieces. I'm doing the top and the bottom just in case anybody sees it. Once that's dry, I'm applying some antique wax and then wiping it off with a baby wipe to give it that muted rustic look. So to the left is with antique wax, to the right is without. Then it was a little too bright for me, so I took just that used baby wipe and wiped it over the top, and it just gave it a little bit of rustic look. So here's the difference between the two. So you could do either, but I liked that it was a little bit darker. Then it was time to assemble my tiered tray. So the first thing you wanna do is find the center of both of your circles, because that's where we're gonna attach our pieces to have it be tiered. I made sure I was in the center, and then I drilled a quick little hole just to help so it wouldn't split when I put the screw in. I repeated the same step with the top and I made sure to hang it off my table just because this one doesn't have any legs on it and I didn't want to screw right through my table. Then I'm just using a clamp that I had to do some quick pilot holes into the top and the bottom of that middle wood piece just so that doesn't split as well. Then I am taking a three quarter inch screw, putting it into the bottom, getting it started and then screwing it right into that dowel rod piece or I guess that plunger piece if you want to be correct on what it actually was. And then we're taking the other screw and screwing on the top. Once that's all tight, we're going to attach the little decorative piece on the top. And because this isn't holding any weight, I'm gonna use it to cover up the screw A, and then B, just use a mixture of super glue gel and hot glue to hook it down. And then I covered the extra glue with some jute twine. I think this thing turned out super great and I love that it's got a lot of clearance for some items that I decorated. There are my cute little snowmen on there, some other small signs, and I also added my little mugs from my previous Dollar Tree video. So if you love the stuff on this tiered tray, be sure to check that out if you've missed it. I will link that up in the iCards as well as down below. These mugs are so easy and you'll never guess what I used to make them. So check out that video if you wanna see how they came together. Around the holidays, I find myself reflecting over the past year and feeling so much gratitude for my friends and family, my fellow YouTube DIYers who've become great friends, and also all of you, my craft buddies who come week after week to craft with me. I am so, so thankful. So in honor of spreading some love and kindness out into the world again this year, Courtney has made it the second annual Random Acts of Kindness Challenge. You won't see us using crazy stuff like pipe cleaners and Q-tips and coconut bras, but you will see us challenging you guys to also spread some kindness out into the world and it just brought so many of us so much joy to do this so I'm so excited we're doing it again this year. 
So obviously I accepted that challenge with open arms and I decided to give blood as my random act of kindness for the Christmas season. I did this last year and I have a universal blood type that I can donate to anyone and so did my grandpa and giving blood was a huge thing to him. He thought it was his duty with that blood type to help out others and so I wanted to continue on that legacy and donate myself. And also as a huge thank you to you guys for the fun year that we've had here on Whiskey and Wit, I wanted to do a giveaway. So if you are a subscriber of my channel, you can be entered. And if you aren't already, hit subscribe down below and then you can be entered. You wanna go down and leave a comment and I will pick five people randomly next Friday, which is December 9th at five o'clock central. All the info will be down below, but I'm gonna be giving away five $20 gift cards and you can pick from one of my five favorite stores that I share on here. So. Starbucks, Home Depot, Walmart, Target, or Dollar Tree. So those are the options. If you win, you'll get a $20 gift card to those places, a little joy for Christmas. There's also a free printable down below that you can grab that Courtney designed if you want some ideas on random acts of kindness. And so here it is, your official invite and challenge to go out and spread some random acts of kindness. Up next, I am accepting the challenge of the slinky. Fingers crossed it doesn't end up in the fail pile like the gremlin bunny. You'll have to watch to see. I don't know if this was an omen, but the slinky broke in half when I unraveled it, but I just kept rolling with it and spray painted sections white. The things I do for this challenge, I've got paint all over my hands. I am spray painting my probably five millionth coat on these things, but you know, it's a mystery box challenge. So we press on. I had to keep turning them so I could get all the angles and I still feel like spray paint's the best option. Honestly, I feel like the best option is like, don't try to do a slinky with what I'm doing, but again, pressing on, we're gonna do it. Then I continued grabbing random stuff from my stash. So I have two pool noodles and two dowel rods left over from some project Alex did in the garage and they fit perfectly to give them a little bit more structure. Then I took my slinky, took one end, kind of jabbed it into the pool noodle so it would grab on. And then I slid the entire slinky around the pool noodle. It fit really well. Then I rehooked my piece in there and then I took one of these Dollar Tree lights, removed the bottom and then used some pressure to figure out where it was gonna sit on the top of my pool noodle to make this fun candle. I used a hobby tool to get out some of the pool noodle so it would sit down in there. And then I used some, just a little bit of hot glue to hook in my slinky and then some super glue gel to hook in my lights cause I knew that the hot glue was gonna melt ridiculously bad with the pool noodle if I used that much. Then my last step was to dress them up a little bit. So I took some burlap, folded it like a kind of awareness ribbon, pinched the center and tie that with some jute twine to get a full ribbon. And this is a hack I've been using everywhere this year. You just roll up your wired ribbon and pull it down and it's gonna look like it has a nice little ribbon curl. I did the same thing with a red and black buffalo check ribbon, tied that on top of my burlap one, and then went through and did the little curling of the ends just like I did with the other pieces. Then I added them to either side of my porch and I really like how this adds a little bit of color and it also ties into my different signs on the porch. It also goes really well with my Polar Express sign that I did in a recent video. So I will share that down below if you're interested in recreating that. From the box, I'm grabbing these wood ornaments from Dollar Tree and I'm also grabbing this pick that she got me from the 99 cent only store. I thought I could use this for more winter, this for more Christmas and combine them into a multi-use piece of decor. So here's some random things I found in my stash and I think this is gonna be awesome. So I have these two, this one has an a blemish on it that's why i didn't use it but these are from dollar general they're little like wood blanks but i have two of them stained in early american and then i have this random like signed piece from hobby lobby so i thought i could center this here that would give me the top to my lantern this would give me the bottom of the lantern and then i have these pieces from hobby lobby that i was going to use for poles for skis for christmas in july that i never got around to but I figured I could cut the pieces to put them on either corner, stain this so it's kind of like a topper, and then add something to the top of that, and we're gonna make a lantern, so let's get going. So step one was to take those square dowel rods from Hobby Lobby, and I cut them down to 12 inches. I needed four pieces of that length. After sanding them, I took everything outside and I stained them with early American stain. I also took that opportunity to stain four of my snowflakes from Val, the early American. And then I also spray painted the other four in white, just cause I was already outside. You could easily paint them with chalk paint too. 
With my pieces all dry, I brought them back inside, added some wood glue, and added my topper first. I got it where I wanted it and then used a little clamp just so it would harden like that. And then I clamped both the bottom of my lantern as well as my little spoke pieces to my table so then that way nothing would move on me and I used my Power Strike air nailer up through the bottom to get everything to stay. You could probably do wood glue for this too, but I just wanted it to be extra sturdy, especially because my toddler knocks things off the table. Then we're going to do the same thing with the top. Just align all of your legs and go straight from the top down. I don't mind the nail holes, but if you do, you could fill them. My last important piece was a scrap one by two piece that I added to the top and that acts as a decoration as well as a holder for some of our other pieces we're going to add. So for Christmas, we're going to make a bow out of this red and white ribbon from Michael's. I took about three loops around, tied the center, and then I took another piece and tied it around the center to cover up the jute twine. I dovetailed the ends and then I took the little pick from Val and shoved it in the back. I wish I had two so it was symmetrical, but we're going to go for the asymmetrical look here. Then in that extra twine I originally used to tie the center of the ribbon, I tied a knot and I used that to hang my bow on my little nub at the top. That helped because then I can switch items out, but looking at it straight on, you would never know that it was hooked to something. And that's going to make it really easy to switch it out for different seasons. Once the holidays wrapped up, I wanted a winter version, so I made a bow in a different ribbon the same way. I tied on a stacked white and stained snowflake, and then for the rest of them, I tied them on different lengths of jute twine and stuck them to the top with some painter's tape. I like how they're kind of floating there. If you don't want to see the jute twine, you could also use some fishing line, but I like the jute twine with the color of the lantern, and they're kind of floating over this LED candle. Once it starts to thaw and you pull your winter stuff down, just pull those down. The painter's tape will come right off. You can leave the bow or you can go back to plain and decorate it however you would like. Super versatile. That's gonna do it for the final installment of the mystery box challenge for 2022. Be sure to go down to the description. You'll find the playlist that will then take you to Kelly's video, onto the next, onto the next, back around until you watch Auntie Cuckoo's video and then it will come back here to me. A huge thank you to Courtney for coordinating everything. She puts so much work in behind the scenes to make sure that these are fun. I know you guys look forward to them so much. A huge happy holidays from me to you. Make sure you enter the giveaway so you have a chance to win some Christmas joy and hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!